Here's Dave up in Cornell country. Morning, Dave. And good morning to you, Harry. You know, I'm looking at these banners, Cornell class of 2010 and 2011. That seemed like light years into the future when I was here and entered 25 years ago. And the autumn leaves are now beginning to change here. There have been so many changes in that whole period of time since the early 80s. I'm back at my alma mater, Cornell University, and I've got to tell you, it's bittersweet to come back to a place you've always held so dear. You expect time to stand still at this one place, but it doesn't. You must be the folks from the class of 2012, right? I can tell. I arrived here as a college freshman 25 years ago, and in fact, I live just a few steps from here. But after two and a half decades, the place where I live is gone. So much of what I'm used to is gone. And being back here now is totally disorienting. Swanky new styles for co-eds. I wonder if my class seems as foreign to these freshmen as the 1940s do to me. Lei Yi Ho is a freshman from Pennsylvania. My parents, one of them was from Hong Kong, one was from China. I'm second generation, so going to an Ivy League institution is pretty big. Freshman Nick Heiner from Seattle. Fun things like the thing I do. I'm also really interested in blogging and making movies. My freshman year, undergraduates were 15% minority. That number doubled by last year to 30% and is reflected in national trends. These girls from Cornell University's Kappa Kappa Gamma sorority are singing a folk song called I Never Will Marry. Susan Murphy was a sorority girl here in the 1970s, and now she's one of the university's vice presidents. I hope that when they leave, they can count among their friends, people from around the world, you know, every race, both genders, gay, straight, because that's the world we live in. Another big difference? How much harder it is to get in. The number of students applying to Cornell has almost doubled since I was a freshman while the chance of getting in, or the admit rate, has dropped by a third. National acceptance rates, though, are better, with 53% of applicants getting in. Oh, and then for research, you guys would have to go to the library, wouldn't you? Yes, yes, we would have to go to the library. Yeah. <laughs> the options for coursework are vast and varied, from wines, yes, wines, to Psych 101, which Lee is taking with 1,200 other students. And look at the note-taking. Pen and paper? Not here. No notebooks? No. Notebooks are for noobs. And a noob is? It's, it's an online gaming term. Are you familiar with online gaming? My dorm room? Imagine Shawshank with posters. Today? This is a, this is a different way of life. <laughs> it's gorgeous. The new dorm I visited had a live-in professor and afternoon tea. I would never say that the earth doesn't go around the sun, because that's true. Oh, yeah. One thing that remains the same, parents' worries. Are your parents worried about guys? Um, they haven't really mentioned it. Should they be worried about guys? Nope. <laughs> Are you saying that because they're gonna see this video? Maybe. <laughs> For many freshmen, the biggest concern, rising tuition. Room and board costs for Cornell's College of Arts and Sciences quadrupled from $12,000 in 1983 to 48000 in 2008. And the national average? Not much better. $32,000 a year for a private four-year college. What's the difference between who you graduate now and, and who left in the time when I was here? Uh, the ones who left when you were here are old. <laughs> <laughs>